cho mình ơi
Yes, yes, yes. How are you? Okay. All right, good man.
Thank <laughs> you.
Yes, I.
jump and easy. Yes. We are waiting the queue from Southern to Channel Okay. This is outward march.
cry. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send?
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say. you
sea and sky I have heard my people cry All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their dark Since spoiler is not a run, I call on Officer Leroy Charles from the Special Branch. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13 In a time such as this, we can only encourage each other from and through the word of God. Philippians 4.13 reminds us that whatever the circumstances may be, we can find strength in the Lord. Burton Deterville, affectionately known as Bouton, is an unforgettable and well-known name in the RSLPF and beyond. He was known not just because he was a police officer, but because of his great character as an individual. Mr. Deterville impacted the lives of individuals he came across only in a positive way. To some, he was a great teacher a captivator of persons. His charisma and poise just made people to fall in love with him. Bouton was not just an ordinary man to some, but he was like Superman. A Superman because nothing was too much for him to do as he exemplified what it meant to stand with and by his colleagues. To others, he was like a peacemaker. An argument or a disagreement ensued, and out of nowhere, he would appear saying jokingly, you guys better fix that thing, because I don't think you want me to get involved. He would calm a situation just because of his calm approach and his quiet demeanor. Mr. Deterville was a respecter of persons. Even when he gave jokes, he would never dare to disrespect anyone. Whether he called persons lunch a toi couché or a de couché, everyone just laughed along genuinely. Bouton was a brother, he was a father, he was an uncle, he was a counselor, he was a moral booster, a character builder, and a true leader at heart. No situation was too much for him to make time for. If you are running low on cash, he would definitely find a special for you to work so that you can make some money. Yes, he was a banker. Could you even imagine that? 
To some, he was Mr. Loyalty. I have never seen someone who took the management of government equipment so serious. Accountability was one of his number one priority. His calm disposition and honesty encouraged mutual respect, fairness, and a peace at the workplace. To some, he was royalty. Whenever he shouted a particular name, his coffee would appear on his desk with the right amount of everything. Some consider Mr. de Turville as a jovial man, and as a result, the echo of his unique laughter through the walls will be forever missed. Mr. de Turville will be remembered because he was one of those who helped others through tough times. He taught persons right from wrong. He took persons from a place of weakness and made them strong. He was someone who took time to encourage others never to give up. Burton Bouton de Turville impacted each one of us in different ways. We will all have our own fond memories of him, to his family, friends, colleagues. I leave these words of comfort from Romans 15, 13, which says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit to serve with love. I thank you. We will now have a musical rendition by Kalex Rizmi.
will now have a musical instrument by the police band. I now call on Officer DCP Philip. He'll be presenting the tribute on behalf of the Commissioner.
Honorable Philip Joseph Pierre, Prime Minister and Minister with Responsibility for Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, also Minister for Justice and National Security, Honorable Alvina Reynolds, President of the Senate, Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House of Assembly, former Prime Minister, Dr. Kenny D. Anthony, Dr. Honorable Virginia Albert Poyot, Minister with Responsibility for Public Service, Home Affairs, Labor and Gender Affairs, other members of Cabinet, Senators, former Commissioners of Police, Mr. Severin Monsheri, Mr. Vernon Faswa, Acting Chief Officer, Acting Chief Fire Officer, Mr. Dittany Downs, Director of the Bodily Correctional Facility, Mr. Vingard, Chief of Ports Police, Mr. De Mr. Kennedy Francis, members of the clergy, family of the deceased, members of the executive, rank and file of the organization, our counterparts in Bermuda, Canada, Britain, and United States Police and Military Service Services. They are not here physically, but they're very present via the virtual platform. Friends, loved ones, colleagues, good afternoon. It is with a heavy heart that I come before you to pay tribute to a man who has touched so many lives. Words will never be able to express the pain and the hurt that is being felt throughout the length and breadth of the organization. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Since the unexpected and untimely death of Superintendent Burton Butor de Turville, our organization has been in a state of mourning. Superintendent, Superintendent de Turville was a brother, a brother, a friend, a father, a teacher, a supervisor, a comrade, a, and a confidant to many. He touched the lives of many police officers. Mine is no exception. Let me apologize on behalf of our Commission of Police, Mrs. Crisita descart who is out of state on official government business. On behalf of the Commissioner of Police, Ms. Mrs. Pelius, Gazetted Officers, Rank and File, Ex-Police Association of the Royal Central Police Force, let me express my sincere condolences to the immediate family, occupational family, relatives and friends of our deceased colleague, Superintendent Burton Butor de Turville. We continue to mourn with Sharon, his children, and extended family, including his brother, who is, one of, who is one of our very own, Special Police Constable 9, Dennis Francis. Was Superintendent Burton de Turville a credit to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force? Please permit me to present my case with a quote from Christopher Holloway, and I quote, the life of one we love is never lost. Its influence goes on through all the lives it ever touched." End of quote. Today, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force celebrates the life of one of our very special and outstanding officers who devoted 31 years of his life to serving the organization and the country that he loved so dearly. We were all in dismay after hearing this sad and unexpected news, which left us all distraught. This distressing news of his passing had everyone searching for answers as it was a total shock. This reality was overbearing and brought prolonged moments of silence, which was not announced but understood by just one look into another's eye. Why did our colleague have to die? Some questions we will never be able to answer. Burton de Turville was born on 24 September 1971 in the community of Grand Rivier Denry. He enlisted into the Royal St. Lucia Police Force on 19 August 1991 as a police constable and was assigned force number 338. During his tenure, he worked at various stations and, depa and departments, including the Central Police Station, Drug Unit, Criminal Investigations Department, Special Branch, Ancillary, Marigo, and Canaries Police Stations. 
He worked at the police complaints unit also. His hard work paid off on 1st of December 2002 when he received his first promotion to the rank of corporal. Two years later, on 15 February 2005, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. In 2007, he routinely acted inspector of police and he was eventually confirmed in the rank of inspector on June 3rd, 2013. On June 1st, 2016, I was privy to be in his company when we, when we were both promoted to assistant superintendents of police. On March 23rd, on March 3rd, 2023, he received the news that he was elevated to the elusive rank of superintendent of police whilst he was officer in charge of the special branch. This promotion was bittersweet as the latter years of his career was not without frustration as he felt he was being underutilized, marginalized, and punished for being the consummate professional that we all knew him to be. I make no apologies. I recall having to remind him that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of adversity and challenge. His response would be, okay, Filipino, and a pleasant smile would be offered. Buto was a charismatic leader. He never shied away from responsibility. He led from the front. No mission or permission was considered too insignificant for him to accompany his men. He never paid attention to rank. He would go on his knees and search if he had to. He would join in walking the beat. No task was beneath him. He loved policing. This speaks to the measure of the man he was. Sometime in the year 2023, when high levels of criminal activity were being experienced, especially in the city, I recall whilst on operational policing activities in the Laclary area, he was shot at point blank range. His life was spared. But he did not, but he did indicate that he could have felt the gunpowder residue burning his face. This was death knocking at one's door. A close call of death may have caused one to give up on policing, but not Buto. He remained resolute in his resolve in ensuring that law and order was maintained. I remember him as part of an old drug squad strike team back in the day, which was at the forefront of policing whilst a war on drugs was being waged. His physical attribute because of his mere size was intimidating. However, he was a gentle giant. Butoa was probably one of the most liked police officers. This was a man that could be approached anywhere and at any time, and he would give a listening air. He had this infectious aura about him, which would cause one to gravitate to him with relative ease. He was also a highly skilled and trained professional who received local, regional, and international training. His training areas include, but not limited to, drug investigations, criminal investigations, intelligence, community policing, leadership, and management. Whenever he went out on training, he always carried our flag high and was a true ambassador to our organization and our country. This man served with distinction. Buto was indeed a credit to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. He believed in the intrinsic value of relationships. He was a very caring person and valued his family. He dedicated his efforts to the organization to ensure that he was an asset to the organization and a model family figure as he provided, as he provided everything which a man could possibly do for his family and his staff. He fostered several professional relationships with his colleagues as they naturally gravitated to him as his trusted friend, advisor, father figure, and model supervisor. You would have heard Sergeant Charles speak to this. Butoa lived a, a full life. The same energy that he exhibited on the work front was the same energy that he gave to his colleagues on the social front. He was the life of the party. There was never a dull moment with Butoa around.
prior to his passing on 15 February 2023, having served the organization diligently for over 30 years, his, his last assignment was officer with responsibility for the special branch, an assignment that requires one to be a person of high integrity. He was a candle that lit many other candles in the organization. He was the light in the dark. The untimely passing of our dear colleague has left a void that time may never feel. Life can be fleeting, but a life lived to the fullest stays in fond memories. While we mourn his loss, we pay tribute and celebrate a life that was well lived. This is particularly a difficult and painful time for his family, his friends, his colleagues, and his loved ones. In extending, the, in extending to them our heartfelt condolences, we wish them the courage and strength to bear this irreparable loss. Our organization remains yours forever. May you, Superintendent Burton de Terville, rest in the peace you so richly deserve. I rest my case. We will now have a tribute by the Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierre. Good afternoon, Church. I adapt Sydney Sheldon's words to suit our local circumstance and see my heroes are those who risk their lives every day to protect our island and make it a better place. Our police, our firefighters, our correctional officers, and our medical personnel. End of quote. Forgive me, however, if today I place greater emphasis on the first mentioned, the police. After all, it is no secret that my father was a police officer and I've had no greater hero than him. Today, we gather here to pay tribute to another hero. Being a member of parliament for the last 26 years, I would have had reason to have known Burton de Tourville for some time. Over the last two years especially, during which time he served as the head of the special branch, we would have been in almost daily contact. During that time, I found him to be a gentle individual, and often I could not reconcile the gentle soul with a hardened police officer. Very often I had to strain my ears to hear what he was saying. He spoke so softly. He took his job seriously. He felt the pain when a crime was committed and vowed to fight the crime with all his vigor. Burton was a policeman's policeman, a man renowned for his fierce defense of his police colleagues, especially those under his immediate command. But that is who Burton Eterville was, a man who loved his country and someone who loved his family, both biologically and extended family. He lived and breathed policing. His every thought was policing. Every time we met for my briefings, he was as enthusiastic as a young recruit. It was that love and diligence of work for which he was rewarded many days before his passing with the promotion to superintendent. Very few have been as deserving of a promotion as he was. I know there were plans to have him united with his beloved special services unit, men and women. And to them I say, I know how hard his loss is to you in particular. The men and women of the special branch department, it's your department that I'm most frequently in contact with. And I see your pain daily. In fact, so quickly aware am I of your pain that today there should have been a sitting of the House of Assembly and I was able to reveal upon the speaker to schedule this for tomorrow instead. For I did not want the special branch officers torn between duty to parliament and love of a beloved fallen colleague. I may have singled out 
the special branches, special services units, departments, but Burton was an all-round police officer, having also served in the drug unit and complaints unit in recent times. Interestingly, the major part of his early policing was done, was done in the rural West Coast police stations, Marigo, and Syrian canneries. He was simply about service, and the location was secondary to that quality. Burton would ask nothing of the men and women under his command that he would not ask of himself. Indeed, he was a commander whose men and women would follow him, whether his rank was constable or superintendent. He was simply a born leader. He was also, he was also a family man, an exemplary father. Outside of his work hours, Burton would be found mostly at home or in a, in a favorite shop. And whilst at home, when there were chores to be done, he would, in, he would invent one or find one. We may have lost a friend and a colleague, but our loss pays, pays in comparison to you, his family. His wife, Sharon, you have lost a, a companion who will never be replaced for his devotion and care. I'm told his final day with you, on reflection, was one which seemed to suggest he knew the end was near. How he, dropped, how he dropped you off in the morning to get the bus to work. How he called you at 2.40 p.m. to tell you there will be no overtime for you today. For he was picking you up himself at 3 p.m. The hearty discussions the two of you had on the drive from Gozi to Denry. Only for him to complain of being unwell when you got home. Yes, he probably knew. You children have lost a father who doted on you like you were still preschoolers and not grown individuals. I know he spoke of you often. I too will miss his wise counsel. As Prime Minister, no decision is easy, but it helps immensely when you have the benefit of his wise counsel, such as what Burton provided. I will miss his presence, whether during my briefings or at Parliament sittings. I have lost more than a special branch head or policeman. I have lost a friend. As we mourn the loss of this true St. Lucian person, let us reflect on our own lives, the way we live, the words we say, our deeds, our actions, our thoughts, how we perceive people, how we treat people. Let us try to live in peace, as I'm sure Burton is resting in peace. Thank you. We will now have the eulogy, and it will be done by Martin James. death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lives of great men all remind us we we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sand of time that was Henry Longfellow oh let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Father, my strength and my redeemer. My name is Martin James, and I am very and extremely honored to be eulogizing my friend and brother. I thank the family for bestowing such an honor upon me. So my expressions here today is a representative voice of his entire family. The best condolences goes out to his family, Sharon, and the children, his mother, and his siblings, to the commission of police and the entire police force. You see, today we are here to celebrate the life of an exemplary human being and soul. He was a husband, a father, a warrior, a statesman, a patriot, a humanitarian, a transformational leader, a motivator, and a friend. Burton would have been very close to many of us here, and he certainly would have influenced many of our lives as we celebrate his life today, or the other way around. An individual who positively touched the lives of an entire police force, his community, and the country by extension. Not just locally, but he represented our country with every given opportunity, with every ounce of distinction, both regionally and internationally. History, and you've heard it earlier, history will prove that he was one of the most loved police officers to ever grace the walls of the RSLPF. You had to clap for that, Missy. You had to clap for that. You had to clap for that. So, my friends, I will attempt to chronicle the very eventful life of our dearest Burton Littleville within the time allotted me. I humbly ask that you stay with me during this time, as Burton is the subject of our collective presence here in this enclosed religious chamber. As you listen, you could hear the music in the background. That's what he was, a musician. So as we go into this eulogy, the music is supposed to create the ambience and which where we understand and celebrate the life of our friend. Young Annette Littleville of Grand Rivia Denry and Cyril Michel of Mondudo Castries welcomed on the 24th of September 1971 a brand new baby boy whom they named Burton. Burton attended the Grand Rivier Primary School as a young child and moved on to the Den Denry Junior Secondary. I was told by his childhood friend, Edley George, that that is where he got the name for the sobriquet Bouton. Burton, you know, I mean, you know how we happen, how it goes. So they named him Bouton. He then sat the middle exam and passed for the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School where he entered in Form 3. That's how it happened back then. Burton grew up in the community of Grand Riviere Denry with his mother and sister, Cheryl Iterville, who was just a few years younger than he was. They grew up like any other young children in the pre-independence era, being of humble beginnings. As we say it, things was rough. Being the first born, you could always appreciate that you have to provide protection over all your other siblings. His orientation years grew up in the savant, growing up in the savant, was very interesting, according to his mother. He was a very obedient, 
intelligent and carried and caring rather child but he was also our beta and was always of good nature a very appreciative and respectful individual he always took pleasure in having a good conversation with his mother he took care of her till the end his mother distinctly remembered a day when she sent him to fetch water in the river as part of his routine chores when Abeta playful button thought he would play a fast one on his mother now we must remember that was the era of the larger bless every parent of rural village living was afraid somewhat of losing a child or children to the white one cow foot woman who always seemed to cause little children to lose their way home when going home from the highly forested areas yes we all know the stories of the children that have never been found due to the larger bless so miss annette was no different from any other mother the poor lady sent Bhutan to the river in the morning because she needed the water to get on with her daily cleaning. Nervousness, anxiety, and fear had consumed every consciousness of Bhutan's mother. Realizing that it was late in the afternoon and he had not returned home with the water. Padimwe Laja Bless Pointy Boyla. She thought to herself, she panicked knowing the reality of the stories she has been told a little while later here comes Bhutan with his bucket of water on his head and he have this I have the perfect excuse to tell my mother and I must get into character he had this look on his face Bhutan Kote Usati she quickly asked him with her strong arm position to call out him but you know before Buto could have experienced the carrot or he could have experienced the wrath of his mother he swiftly yelled mama a larger bless tried to take me but I escaped the poor lady drink that and was extremely happy that her boy was saved now I'm pretty sure you all all know that is not how the actual event went partner went liming playing all day with no concern about the task at hand trust me he escaped with that one because Miss Annette wasn't easy you know my Lila the family moved from one Grand Riviere to the other Grand Riviere, up at Brosily. They settled in the community of Degazon, the new life. Burton was blessed with three other siblings on his mother's side, apart from Cheryl. They were Jose de Turville, his brother, Bernadette de Turville, full share, sister, and his last brother, Noah Joseph. On his father's side, his siblings are Mitchell Antoine, Dennis Francis, Sabrina Nicholas, and Tara Lee Adonis. To ease the burden of hardship faced by his mother in sustaining his attendance at the Castries Comprehensive School, they agreed that he would stay with his dad at Lakudu and then Rose Hill during the weekdays and move back to his mom on weekend. That arrangement continued until he was enlisted in the Royal Central Police Force in 1991. Burton was very deep in church. He served as an altar boy in his early years. Then was in the choir and eventually learned to play the guitar and served as a musician in the parish of Parishus. Then, father 
for Monsignor Michel Francis and Father Albert would have loved to be here will attest and will tell how, so how deeply rooted he was in church he was so deeply rooted and I didn't know that part that he was considering becoming a priest during imagine Bouton is a priest Burton the father and family man Burton met and fell in love with Sharon Eugene of the Rivier in the year 1992 and lived together for 31 long years till he transited to the great beyond the union brought forth three lovely offsprings each of them being born wow five years apart first it was Timika Bosha de Tourville second Tim Timikwa Bosha de Tourville and thirdly Timikwan Bosha de Tourville all the names are to match and mix you know that, that's how parents do it my friends please permit me to captivate your attention with the words of his long his lifelong love Sharon and it goes like this Burton was everything to me. He was perfect, but yet not a perfect human being. He could sometimes be overprotective, treating me almost like a father safeguarding his children. Burton, you played your part in my life, in our lives, the best way you knew how to. You built this beautiful house on the hill at Belmont that transformed into our home. My goodness, it will never be the same without you. We appreciate your every action in achieving family. Although we would have loved for you to be home with us all the time, we understood the intricacies of the job that was your second love. My love, who is ever prepared to treat with such a tragedy, being picked up from work, driving down the road, listening to our favorite Calypso songs from Legacy, and just a few hours later, having to deal with the sudden, unprepared eventuality of rushing you to the hospital. How does one start to understand, ever understand, the doctor's words? Sorry, madam, but we have pronounced him dead as your loved one has passed. Oh my, a part of me died with you that day. You are the most loving and caring person I have ever known. I love you, baby, and will always love you forever. I will miss the way you prepared your crab main course. Stew, kalalu, curry, baked, or just crab and guan glow with lots of garlic. Even how you prepared the back la rivière. Moving forward will definitely be hard, but I promise you, I will try. Oh wow, Burton! You should have prepared me for this. Your effervescent personality and the presence will forever remain with us at home. Your memories are printed in the hearts, in our hearts, and remain a lifelong part of our existence. Rest in perfect peace, my love, till we embrace again. Timika, his first daughter. Daddy always provided for his family no matter what happened he stuck around for our entire lives to see us grow and have a good appreciation of ourselves until he transited this life daddy you pulled all the strings you could have just to just like the guitarist you are to ensure that i attended medical school as this is my long my lifelong dream the struggles of acquiring all the resources in particular the finances took the better of all your attempts i will persevere and ensure the path of becoming a doctor comes to fruition Yes, daddy, for you, daddy. 
You love my son Zio to the moon and back, your only grandchild. You were always the first to purchase his Christmas gift, Christmas gifts, and somehow found it very, very funny when Zio a thought only called you by your name. No daddy answers, he bought wrong. You found the strength even as you suffered the stroke that snatched you from this earthly existence to still have time to play with Zio. Whilst he was suffering the stroke, the family said that he, Zio was watching in awe and like, what's going on with daddy? Or what's going on with Buto? And um, he smiled and he sent his hand at Zio and he tried to play with him. So which means that show of strength will forever be etched in our lives. Daddy, I know that you sometimes that we sometimes had a rocky relationship. I owe this to us being so alike. However, that never diminished the love that we shared throughout. You know we both believe in laying all the cards on the table and not run away to cause any snowballing of issues. Bhutan was real. Daddy, you always told us that there is room for improvement. I pledge that I will continue to improve and pray the Father welcome you into his heavenly chambers in the great beyond. His second daughter, Timikwa. She was known as in the household as the most disorganized, failed to prepare for school the night before, and rushes to get ready for school every morning religiously. She recalled one morning hearing the siren or the signal to evacuate the house with immediate effect, which was her father blowing the horn very, of his vehicle very perversely. She didn't have the choice but to grab everything she could have if she wanted to get on a train. Well, Murphy's law kicked in and here was the turn of events. When she got to Castries from Denier River, she realized she was devoid of her shoes. Thinking her little brother Bershon would have her back, she whispered to him, Bershon, Bershon, I forgot my shoes. Bershon in disbelief shouted, Bersha, you forget your shoes? Well, well, you know what definitely happened. Everything went downhill. Bersha, Bersha, where are your shoes? That was Burton. With at the top of his voice, at this point, you know, Bush, Bersha's heart dropped to her toes, which transformed into her shoes. That was a much... So then what he did, he dropped her off at the, the bus stand to get, go back home and get your shoes. Well, you know that was a much better action than what he had earlier insinuated that I was going to bring you to the Ave Maria school and let you walk from the Ave Maria school and go back to the bus stand to get your shoes. That was much better. So she says that even when he's upset, he's still very kind. And her words to him are, you are my hero, you are family oriented, you are overprotective, very jovial, but stern and very loving in your own way. One phone call and Superman Bouton, Burton would be there in the blink of an eye. Just his appearance, as you heard earlier, would achieve the impact needed. Daddy, you always ensured that your children were picked up from school, dropped off safely on the bus stand, you know, when you were still at work. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we'll miss you always. Lovely rest, Daddy, till we meet again. From Timmy Kwan Bershon, Beterville. Daddy, you were always there to protect, to provide full support to me when I am in my element. He loved to sing. You are my number one cheerleader, and I am so grateful we shared those moments that made me so happy. It has helped groom me and assist me with my confidence. You were never shy, however, to be tough on me when you thought I was producing way below my potential. I was looking forward to getting my driver's license so I could drive you up the so I could drive up the road with you. Dropping you off at work 
and going in line with your vehicle. Even though I appeared timid, you have groomed and prepared me to be a man. Daddy, I know you will be looking over me from where you are and wish you could see the fine gentleman I will become. Yes, Daddy, I am the man of the house now. And just like you did, I will take care of mommy and the girls always. Rest, my champion, rest well. Siblings, Cheryl, his sister, affirms that Bhutan was destined to be a police officer. She will never forget the times when they heard the sound of the big Rambali truck passing. So many young people don't know that, but the older folk will know the big old Rambali truck and the sound. Her big brother, protector, would have, he would have her to lay down and keep quiet. Then he would cover her up with pisec from the banana trees to ensure that she was fully camouflaged. So she would not be seen lest she was taken by Demu. Because you know what? When they run by the truck passing, everybody say, boy, in the silly season, Demu, you can't put Demu, you can't put show. Then he would run home after the truck had passed. So Cheryl says that Bhutan Burton was her champion. He would beat up every boy who dared to hit his sister. She was loving every bit of that protection. When he was finished passing his hand on them, he would run home and tell his mother, Mommy, we just finished passing the memory by on a bash so they told me that he would go and tell his mother he just finished passing on and his people there. So Cheryl remembered that. His brother Dennis Button was a loving brother to me. Button and I were very close. And everybody who knows us always say that we look so much alike. Yes, Nuni Mem Papa. When it came to work, there was no brother-to-brother -brother relationship, strictly professional. He always received the respect that he deserved with the rank that he carried. I remember clearly when he was officer in charge of the complaints unit, where I was the driver, that's then he's saying that. He got in one morning and saw me eating fried chicken and a fry bake for breakfast. He said to me, <clears throat> Garçon, and walked away laughing in his very infectious tone. Lo and behold, the next morning, he was at the office before me. And guess what? He was enjoying a fried chicken and a bake. The same thing he saw me eating the day before. Realizing the conflicting position he had found himself in, he said to me, so he chuckled and then they smiled and they both had a good laugh. So then he said, My paka di wan yeah, boss man. And they had a very good laugh. Big brother Button, I know you are gone, but your memories will be forever in my heart. Continue to rest in peace, dear brother. Gone too soon. Sabrina, his sister. Burton was always there when I needed him. Any encountering or any in incident I was involved in, and I was in or any incident I was involved in, he would find himself there. And in, believe me, I was involved in quite a few, quite a few of incidents. I could depend on my brother to assist me and always build me out. All my other siblings could attest that Burton was the peacemaker, and you've heard it, in the entire family. We looked up to him for advice, counseling, and for everything that was needed. He would surely say it like it is, but his words always made every situation lighter, simply because he turned every situation into a big joke. That was psychology at its best. He became the patriarch of the family when daddy passed away in 2017. Now that we've lost our big brother, it's hard to put the pieces together. 
we are comforted however knowing that he lived a good life everyone who verbalized anything about him could speak openly of how loving and how a good person how much of a good person he was may you sleep and rest in the father's arm my loving brother his in-law then it's his wife i could clearly remember 16 years ago when Burton attended our wedding as an honored guest, he gladly accepted with no hesitation the request to become the best man. Imagine when he reached, reached that he did him, he wanted him to be the best man because of the no show of the previous best man. That I will forever cherish and remember. Right? He would always avail himself of any situation whatsoever. He was an awesome brother in law. And he will surely be missed. Rest easy, dear brother in law. Now, permit me to enter the professional button, the Tovil. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness and others have greatness thrust upon them. That was William Shakespeare. The great Burton de Tourville started work, working as a teacher when he left school. He first taught at the then Rock Hall, Rock Hall Senior Second, Ju Rock Hall Junior Secondary, impacting knowledge and character to the students within his care. He then moved to the CLT Secretarial School where he was the sole male teacher on staff. During the time there, he made sure that the needs of all the students were met. It is often proclaimed that teaching and learning should bring joy and that exactly and that's exactly what Burton brought to the classroom he didn't just care about the students academically he cared about them emotionally and socially as well he motivated his motivation was not only for the income but the total outcome of his students and people his former colleague Ed Gifford Joseph proudly affirms that sometimes it takes a single teacher to turn the, the child's life around. And Burton de Turville was undoubtedly that teacher. Burton de Turville was enlisted in the Royal Central Police Force, as you heard earlier in 1991, and he set his standards high from the onset. He worked hard and was consistent at it, determined only to succeed. However, Having made the grade and graduated from the police training school, he was destined for greatness within the rank and file of the RSLPF. As the mantra says, to serve and to protect, he was ready to do just that. As a young constable, he was very stern and maintained his professionalism at all costs. We've heard the stories from persons who found themselves on the other side of the law and had to encounter the policing arm of Bouton. Garçon, Monsieur Paka joué ou ça? Ou pas être gossé la même ici? They started, they stated, even though they were arrested, they were always treated with dignity. Bouton worked in many departments within the RSLPF, as you would have heard earlier, right, in, in previous tributes. He always served as the central energy within the team. He would be the go-to, and as you heard as well, the go-to person when he was faced with any issue. So the past and current officers of the beaten patrol, the drug squad, the special services unit, the special branch and the other departments where he worked could attest that his dedication to team player, that he had a dedication to team player, that was his disposition. He was a supervisor by excellence. Members of the SSU would ask you, which one of you current heads of departments would be the diarist on a shift when your shift is short just to ensure that the job is done and the public is served well Burton de Tourville did that all the time so you could learn something from him every morning you could find him by the dairy at Sandra's place to have his breakfast he was very fond of sardine and crackers he, along with Matthias, Eric James, Felicia, Zai, Tresel, Tej, KK, and Adrian would meet religiously every morning at the same place. One thing, he found pleasure in meeting new people. He connected with 
he, his connection was always profound and he remained very relevant in every relationship Sarah Brown of Canada will always remember his very entertaining rendition of Old Oak Tree at during the karaoke at a place and so uh, Okay, wow. Sorry. Okay, he remembered, he told us a story that during a drug squad operation in the Poilin area, he, he, he and the other team, they were lying in the bush, ready for action. And when he looked on his right side, he saw a Federalist crawling just past him. He paused. He was shocked. He there. As soon as the snake had left, he fluctuated. He paid. And, and he said that he caused, he thought the snake would come back, but the snake got afraid. He said that, and he gave those stories albeit with a level a twist of jovial to say that police officers policing it is nothing easy yet some people don't understand and don't appreciate the noble profession that it is the police force recognized him as the best operational sergeant during one of its award ceremony he loved his love for policing of op operations went up by leaps and bounds and he conducted many other operations during his career Bouton was not afraid. All right. The proverb, adversity introduces a man to himself, epitomizes the measure of this man. Currently laying before us. Yes, when you encounter hardship, the difficult situations will reveal you and will make you who you are. So Burton's leadership style was clothed with emotional intelligence and empathy, understanding and putting himself in everybody's shoes, especially his team and his subordinates. This earned him the best boss ever. He knew how to get the job done at all costs, always naturally throwing a little humor in there. He was all about optimum productivity, yet referred to as a weak leader by those who lack emotional intelligence and I bet you so Burton served on the police welfare association as the inspectors branch board on the inspectors branch board and the central executive and he was part of the team that that successfully negotiated with the government for the high risk allowance that we enjoy. That allowance was in the making for about 25 years before we received it. And Burton was part of that team that negotiated that. That deserves a round of applause, guys. Burton was not just satisfied with the, the serving his members and treating them well. He, he also served on the his, re his representative posture continued when he became an officer at the Police and Allied Services Credit Union, serving on the credit committee and then ascending to the board of directors. He served with every bit of fairness and financial wisdom. Many members benefited and their lives were improved due to his input at that level. At that level. As the music resonates within the walls and let the violin and the piano resonate within the walls of this cathedral, let us all in our cell, in our collective cerebral cortex, remember him as an officer who would remain true to his word every time. He was a classified individual. This is why he was trusted at the highest level. He remained steadfast and true to his oath always, even when he went through all the tribulations and stresses of the job. 
he remained steadfast and true to his oath even when he was down and he also needed counseling he remained steadfast and true to his oath till the end of his earthly existence so my brother at least you experienced 15 days of your superintendent promotion oh wow you served and you played your part on this earth detour so don't dig nothing our creator whom we serve decides who stays and who goes you have work to do on the other side so go easy my brother go easy button the turville has bequeathed the royal senator police force with his positive and humble persona indeed he will leave us with those simple words and i'm sorry listen carefully please respect each other and treat each other with love so as you transit this dimension and enters another may you be treated with all the respect and love you deserve my brother in departing you did leave footprints on the sand of time my brother you will definitely live through your offsprings and so many of us you have impacted during your 51 years on this earth so may his spirit live on in all of us and may we all strive to embody his strength and courage in our own lives let us honor his memory and cherish the time we shared with him may his legacy remain alive in our hearts forever so my friends as i end shall we all rise to our collective feet please rise please rise and let our collective voices send off like no order with the first two lines of the chorus of see you again it goes like this let me you repeat it's been a long time it's been a long day without you my friend and i'll tell you all about it when we sit again shall we in our collective voices sing it musicians please everybody after three one two three it's been a without you my friend and i'll tell you all about it when i see you one more time please been a long day without you my friend and i'll tell you all about it together slowly when i see you again when i see you again I salute you, my friend. Let your slumber be peaceful. Will the family members go to the back of the church to receive the body? As we get ready to begin our service. 
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And with your spirit. I bless the body of Burton with the holy water that recalls his baptism of which St. Paul writes. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Burton put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. Let's join singing our entrance hymn, Hero, O Lord.
let us pray Oh God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Burton, whom you have called this day to journey to you, and since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Will the two readers please come to the sanctuary? A reading from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 4, verses 7 through to 15. The virtuous, the virtuous man, though he burton dies before his time, will, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's gray hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, and he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desires corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life, his soul being pleased to the Lord. He has taken him up quickly from the wickedness around him, yet people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads. That grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord, and protection his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Our response, we join the choir in singing, Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Who's here? Who's here?
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I will tell you something that has been secret, that we are not all going to die, but we shall be changed. This will be instantaneous, in the twinkling of an eye. When the last trumpet sounds, it will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we shall be changed as well. Because our perishable nature must put on imperishability, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and when this mortal nature has put on immortality, then the words of scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sin? Now the sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Let us all stand for the gospel acclamation. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory be to you o lord jesus said to his disciples do not let your hearts be troubled trust in god trust in god still and trust in me there are many rooms in my father's house if there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wish to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister and the Ministers of, of Cabinet, Senators, the rank and file of the Royal, Royal St. Lucia Police Force and all the uniformed, other uniformed officers. I wish also to extend to, to Burton's wife and then his mother, his, the children, siblings, all of you, um, from me and from Father Albert. Father Albert is conducting a Lenten retreat in St. Vincent. So if he was here, he would have been here. And um, 
and to give you the assurance of our prayerful support at a very difficult time. We've been sitting for a while, so I think that the little chance we got to stand and to sing the entrance hymn must have been a good stretch for us. I don't intend to keep us long. And as I was sitting there listening to the tributes and, you know, on the eulogy, I was saying to myself, I see the value in having these two things separated. You know, where we have, the cathedral can be used certainly, but maybe on two different days really, where we have all the time in the world to do our tributes, and when we come to the funeral service, we just have the funeral service because it's a long, it's a long stretch. And I'm not sure how many of you have the energy to listen to me now. <laughs> um, Burton is, was very dear to my heart because when I went to my first assignment in Larissa's Denry at St. Michael's Parish, that's where I encountered him. I, I became a parish priest at nine months old, <laughs> a priest, <laughs> and, um, and Burton, yes, we, I met him in the, in the choir as a, as a musician. Father Albert was still a student at, at secondary school and he was in the choir. So we had a lot of, a lot of fun together. And yes, Burton was interested in the priesthood because I was a young priest then, energetic, yeah? And um, very involved in, in music and the life of the community. So I'm not surprised that he would have looked at me as one he could be like, yeah? Um, but what, what is important is that although he chose a different career path, yet God was at the center of his life. And that is so, that is so crucially important. Um, last week, Wednesday, I had the funeral service of a, of a young man from Moshi who, who went to St. Mary's College, from there got a scholarship to go to Cuba to do industrial, to become an industrial engineer, and from there migrated to Canada to do a double master's and moved from there to Austria. And we didn't even know that. And this young man was a nuclear scientist, Lucius Dillis. And Lucius was taking decisions at the highest level on behalf of the world to protect the world from nuclear disaster. They brought his body down. And I said, you know, here is a young man I would have wanted to, I would have wanted to know because he kept, he kept um, very simple, and I was saying to them that keeping his faith was something that was, was a bit surprising because science and spirituality are often diametrically opposed to each other. You know, scientists, many scientists come to believe in God when they encounter what we call a miracle, where science cannot explain it anymore, and then they have to back off and they say, well, that's, that's divine intervention. So I, I asked them to, the former principal, I said, here is a young man we must put in our, put his picture and a little write-up about him in our Moshi school, because Moshi is seen by many as an underdog school. But if this little fella, this little boy, could have come from Moshi, where they would have considered behind God's back, and to have made that kind of progress, I want the other little boys and girls too in Moshi to be able to come to know this young man and to know that they can achieve greatness as well. But he had no flair about him, they said. For one thing, because he held such a high position which with, with a lot of confidentiality, he did not want people to know what he was doing. So um, I heard much about Burton, and yes, what, what you have said about him is true. Very simple person. And um, the, the picture, the photo that you see on the funeral program, those of you who did not know him, that is a man. That was the man because you saw Burton's teeth long before you saw him. 
always have this beautiful, perfect smile, wonderful person. And, um, and yes, mom, I'm sorry that Britain was supposed to bury you and you are the one burying him. It happens. It happens to mothers. Um, um, let me see, sometime, I think last Friday, last Thursday, I had the funeral of a cousin of mine. In, um, the funeral was at La Clary. And uh, this was the sixth child of seven children, and his mother is still alive. 99, thereabout. So for a mother to bury six of her seven children, you could imagine how painful an experience that must be. Losing one is, is one too many, but losing six, you could well imagine what it must be like. So mom, I, I ask the Lord to give you the strength that you will need at this time, that the Lord can really carry you through, and, um, and that as the days and the weeks and the months pass by, you will be strengthened more and the tears will dry up. And the same for Burton's wife and the, the children. And the young man of the house, yes, take, take charge. Yeah? And your dad will give you the wisdom to be able to navigate through this. I, um, when somebody dies so suddenly, I was shocked when I got the news of Burton's death. I was really, really shocked. But when somebody dies that young and so suddenly, we have questions to ask, to, to ask ourselves of our readiness for this kind of encounter with sickness that leads to death. Yeah? And it is, it is a question that only you and I can answer about our readiness, the need to be ready for any eventuality, yeah? And um, as, we, as we are here, let us also remember to pray for Honorable Joachim Henry, who is um, re recovering from, from, from sickness, and that, you know, he too had a close call, but the Lord maybe still has plans for him, that he still has work to do. He has not worked as long as Burton for 31 years, so he has some years to work still. Um, let, let's pray for his total recovery and that he can return to us so that he can continue his work. But yes, whenever we, we experience that kind of suddenness of death, it tells us something about ourselves, about the need, need to prepare. And um, it appeared that the Honorable Prime Minister was having the same thoughts like myself. In moments like these, what counts in the end is the kind of love and kindness and compassion that we show to people. That's what really counts. That's what really matters. Look, he got the title of superintendent. I don't know how many people even were able to address him by that new title, and he's gone, okay? Gone. At the end of our life's sojourn, those titles that we have inherited in life, they're gone. And we all stand on the same level with before God. And the name that God knows Burton by is the name that he was given at baptism, Burton de Turville. Not superintendent, not inspector, not nothing like that. And that, that, that holds for all of us. So what counts is how well we live this life. And especially, not just living it, but living it with others. And, um, and for those of you who encountered Burton in the, in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and, and in other, other um, circumstances, he exemplified that, all of those beautiful qualities. Now, as we speak about him, we make, we make those qualities, qualities sound as though they are extraordinary, as though he was an extra special person. These qualities should be ordinary qualities that he, every one of us ought to possess. Yeah? Every one of us ought to be kind towards the other person. Or every one of us ought to be respectful. Every one of us should, should show compassion. To, towards other people. We should be loving. And, and that is what will, will make for a, a good society. Here we were on Sunday evening at Grosley. 
where Archbishop Gabriel Malze celebrated the fourth mass against crime and violence because someone had suggested to him why don't he celebrate a mass at each of the cardinal points in the archdiocese on, on the island. So we began on the 13th of December with a mass at Miko. It was a feast of St. Lucy. In the 2nd of, 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 of February, we were at Vieux which would be the southern point. On the 19th of, of February, we were in Sufre, the west. And on Sunday, 19th of, of March, we were in Grosely. And it appears just when we had finished with the mass and the procession, then we heard of the two homicides at Banan Bay. It's like the, the evil one was saying, well, you know, I'm going to fight. But you know something? He cannot fight to the end. We will fight to the end and win. But we have to be a people of faith, a people of prayer, so that we can bring evil that kind of evil to its knees so that we can return to that peaceful place, St. Lucia, that we, once, that we once knew. Our land, Lucia, comes from the Latin word lux luce, which means light. And that's why part in our motto is the land, the people, the light. Because St. Lucia, Lucia means light. And so we need to ask the Lord to dispel the darkness of, of this, this animosity and hatred and anger and to replace these horrible qualities with love, with kindness, with compassion, looking out for each other. That is what we are called to be as individuals and, and, and what more as Christians. Because when we, when we get before God, we're going to be judged. And we are not going to be all the accolades we have received during our lifetime, you know, they are gone. What we will be doing before God is to answer the question. When I was hungry, did you, give, did you feed me? And when I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was homeless, did you give me shelter? When I was sick, did you come to visit me? When I needed care, were you there to extend that love, that compassion? Were you there to show kindness to the one in need? That's what we're going to answer in the end. And, 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 and those of us who have not yet begun to put those very good qualities, those values into practice, we had better begun now. We had better begin now because we do not know how much time we have to do it. And, um, and that is why I, I, I say to, 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 to people, if there is a kind word you need to say, say it now. You know, sometimes we reserve all of those beautiful things at death. You know, Burton can't hear anything like that. And I hope that those of you who were in the police force with him and have met him in, in, in different um, situations, different encounters, would have told him how much you appreciated him. Would have told him how much you loved him. Would have told him how much he was a mentor, a teacher for you. You see, because when we don't do this, we remain heavy hearted. But when we are able to do it in life, to acknowledge, to affirm, to show appreciation, then although we are saddened by the loss, yet we are comforted knowing that we had told our loved one, our friend, our colleague, all or at least most of the things we wanted to say to him or to her. That is what counts in the end. And um, those values, we had them, you know. Those values were inculcated in us by, um, by, by many of our parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and the people in the community. Huh? You remember the days when it took the village to raise a child? Yes, it took the village to raise a child. And, and the, the village instilled those values in us. But as we became more modern, we thought that those had to go out the window because those don't go well with modernity. But I think what we need to do is to go back 
and recapture those very values that we've thrown out the window. So, important parents, grandparents, important to teach your children to greet people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know why we, we greeted people? One, out of good manners and courtesy. And secondly, our parents and the elders used to tell us, in the event that you fall sick, you drop down. If you didn't greet them, don't expect them to come behind and to help you. You have to be polite so that people will look out for you. We have to teach people to say thank you. You see the little ones, the little one there? He need, he's a boy. He needs to learn to say thank you. And when he doesn't say, don't give him what he wants, what he's asking for, until he says thank you. You know why? Because they will grow up thinking that they are entitled. That's how we inculcate, inculcate values. We have to tell people when we are sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I may have said something or done something that did not go down well. I'm sorry. I think you misunderstood me or I said it badly. I'm sorry. That when we have to pass by people and, and we realize they're in, their, in, they're in our way, how, how good it would be to say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, ma'am, rather than just passing through a quasi tutmon. These are values that we, we have to learn, we have to teach, you see? And if those are not taught, they will not be learned. If we don't teach our children to be kind, they will not show kindness even to you as their parents who have slaved hard for them. Far less to other people. Yes. So, while it may have seemed that Button was extraordinary. Button did the things that he should have done as a human being. As a child, as a father, as a, as a husband, as a, as, a, as a colleague, supervisor, leader. He, he taught by the example of his own life. And how best to teach but by example. People expect those qualities from me, the priest. So if, if, I, if, I, if I show some kind of rough edge, people will be surprised and even scandalized that Father should behave that way. What happened to Father Michel? But these are qualities that we should all possess. Good manners, every one of us should have that. Courtesy, every one of us should cult cultivate that. All of those qualities. So we thank God for, for Burton's life. By our standards, short, yeah, but God knows best. God had his plan for him. So we commend him to the Lord and say, Lord, remember your son who tried his utmost, who, truly, who lived his best, who gave the best example he could to his family, to his colleagues, to the community. I heard from um, A.C.P. Phillips, yeah, about persons whom he would arrest surprised at the gentleness with which he dealt with them that's not exceptional we may have got on the wrong side of the law but that does not mean to say that we have to treat people inhumanely it should come naturally to us so let us thank god for this gentle giant loving man husband father son and um, colleague and citizen of this land. We've lost a, 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 a great person. So we ask God to remember all his good deeds and to reward him with eternal life in heaven. We ask God to comfort his family with his mother, you know, his wife, her children, siblings, all of those who are from Grand Riviere. I see the, the whole of Grand Riviere turn out to eh? uh, you all turn out in your numbers, well, not just Grand Vier, the valley, yeah? So, and I saw you all went local as well. You all have Jaim as your local fella to carry. You know, why? These people from the valley, they, 
they look out, out for their own your minister is there your parliamentary rep so thank you for coming out because i look at the church and i said my goodness this funeral service could not have been held at the larissa's church we would need three churches the size of larissa's to be able to hold you know but that says something about the character of the individual when so many people turn out you know i don't know if you all have seen everybody Stand up, stand up, stand up. Turn around. Just turn around. Take your time. All of these people you see there came out for you all. All of them. Left work and everything else they had to do just for you. And you see, presence, presence gives strength. So feel strengthened by the presence of so many people who are here today and they come here as ministers of consolation to comfort you to console you at this very difficult time and when it gets rough just remember you had a full cathedral church that came out to support you in prayer and moral support we ask that the Lord may comfort you as you as you go through that time of grief. You may be seated. Um, Queen Elizabeth, the late, said after her husband died, she said, grief is the price we pay for love. Grief is the price we pay for love. So take your time to grieve. Let nobody rush you. Let nobody tell you why are you still crying. The more one loves, the more one grieves. I still get triggers at funeral services. I still get them, and sometimes it brings tears to my eyes. So take your time, that the Lord will bring you to that place where you will experience peace in time, where you would have the fondest memories of Burton, but it will not be as painful as it is now. And to all of us, brothers and sisters, who are those pilgrims on the journey, let us live our lives well, so that when that day comes, whether it comes suddenly like Burton's, accidentally, in, in like, like those who have died in, tragically in vehicular accidents, or violently, God forbid, as it has happened to many, that the Lord would have found us ready. Finally, let us pray that the Lord we protect each one of us here and our loved ones against a sudden and an unprovided death. Amen. Shall we stand for the intercessions? Family members with the bidding prayers, please come to the sanctuary. God, the Almighty Father, raise Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Prayer for the Church. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, may our Pope Francis, Cardinals, Bishops, and Priests of the Church, and all who spread the good news, be given the strength to express in action the word they proclaim, and may they be open in the 
and may they be open to the signs of the times to exercise a ministry of humble service to God's people. May the Holy Spirit sustain them in their challenge to the values of our world in preaching the gospel of life and hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayer for the family of Burton de Tuville. O Lord, creator and redeemer of all faithful, you loved and supported your son throughout his life, and in faith, we believe he has entered into internal life with you. We ask you, Lord, to give comfort and courage to us, the members of Burton's families, and as, re as well as relatives and friends gathered here in person and following online. We pray that we may receive courage, strength, and comfort, having shared his life and faith, to find light in time of darkness and faith in time of doubt. Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayer for the repose of departed souls. O Lord, you promise eternal life to all who follow your way. Grant to the souls of your departed servants release from their sins and raise up all who have died. We pray especially for the soul of Burton D. Turville in gratitude for his life. Now that he has come to the end of his earthly journey, may Christ give him and all, who de and all the departed a place at the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A prayer for our nation. God of hope, we thank you for our nation, St. Lucia. We ask you for your mercy, O Lord, that we may live in peace and unity as brothers and sisters and as one body in Christ. Lord, we thank you for our beautiful island, St. Lucia, and we ask for your daily blessings upon its people. We ask this in your holy name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Prayer for the youth. God of wisdom and understanding, that give up all spiritual gifts. We pray that you touch the lives of the youth of our nation. Let them see your face, know your heart, and experience your love in their life. Strengthen them with your precious gift of faith in you alone. May they find examples that will encourage them to live the faith with courage and devotion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for those who have lost their lives through violence that the Lord will grant the eternal rest to them in his kingdom and comfort and strength to the bereaved loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother, Burton. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated, please. We will be picking up a collection and it will be an aid for the restoration of the cathedral. During this time, will the choir will sing close to you. Those doing the collection, please the baskets are the half of the church.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Burton, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim who cannot kneel may, may sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gabriel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Burton, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Lucy, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not, not into, into temptation, but, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and suffer from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is a, a funeral mass, which means to say that for Catholics, you, once you can receive Holy Communion, you should avail yourself of that opportunity to do so. During this time, the choir will sing, I am the bread of life.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Burton, who today has journeyed from this world, may by the sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. During this time, we will have the signing of the register. During this time, the Sean Augustine will sing. Will the four witnesses come across to the table to sign the register? Sharon Eugene, Sabrina Nicholas, N Nicholas de Tourville. and everybody. The timeless theme of love will pass away it's not a dream God will make all things new Today Evil will banish To eternal hell To evil will banish To eternal hell Where I will leave 
with my Savior, each Sing more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. All the praises to the great see we will live in a life of all the Never crying again Oh, the prayer is you The great thing I am We will live in the light Of a real It wasn't gospel night for jazz, you know. You know, you know why? Because the glory is not going given to this young man; it's given to God. So when we give glory to God, we also say Amen. Yeah, yeah. So wait for gospel night to give um, Sissy Winans and whoever else the applause. Yeah, please stand for the, the um, final commendation. Our brother Burton has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend, her, commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother Burton to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. We'll join singing, He Touched Me.
your response to the song of farewell receive his soul and present him to god the most high receive his soul and present him to god the most high saints of god come to his aid hasten to meet him angels of the lord receive his soul and present him to god the most high may christ who called you take you to himself may angels lead you to the bosom of abraham receive his soul and present him to god the most high eternal rest grant unto him O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon him receive his soul and present him to God the most high into your hands father of mercies we commend our brother Burton in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ he will rise with him on the last day we give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Burton, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Those of you who will be joining us at the cemetery, I want you to show the utmost sensitivity and respect because this is about the most difficult part of the religious ceremony. Because it is a military funeral, there will be the gun salute. So expect it and do not go YII to make, to, <laughs> to make it you know, scandalous. Yeah, it is still part of the ceremony. So let us do it in a, let us be dignified knowing that part of the gun salute is part of the military exercise. Let's join singing our recessional hymn, Pilgrim Song.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save.
I the Lord of sea and sky I have heard
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save.
I have heard my people cry All who dwell in dark and sin My hand will save I who made the stars of night Barrels are just sorting out something.
And still four paces outward march two pace outward march party you better raise raise outward turn Turn in, slow march. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Stand still. Slow march. Hey, don't take me try, boy.
I just want to remind us again that this is the most difficult part of this ceremony. And I want you to be sensitive and I want you to be courteous. Sensitive to the family. And because it's a military service, I, re I told you about the, the gun salute. So don't overexcite yourself because it will happen. You will have a command being given, so keep calm because you're a big live stream, okay? You don't want people in England and all over the place to realize that solutions don't know how to behave as a military general. The Lord be with you. And also Our brother Burton has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Burton, 
together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We will bless the tomb where he will be laid to rest. God of endless ages, through disobedience to your law we fell from grace and death entered the world. But through the obedience and resurrection of your son, you revealed to us a new life. You granted Abraham, our father in faith, a burial place in the promised land. You prompted Joseph of Arimathea to offer his own tomb for the burial of the Lord. In a spirit of repentance, we earnestly ask you to look upon this tomb and bless it, so that while we commit to the earth the body of your servant Burton, his soul may be taken into paradise through Christ our Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. There's still a little much, too much talking around us, huh? Because God has chosen to call our brother Burton from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Dear friends, our Lord comes to raise the dead and comforts with us, comforts us with the solace of his love. Let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Your response will be, Lord have mercy. Word of God, creator of the earth to which Burton now returns, in baptism you called him to eternal life to praise your Father forever. Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. Son of God, you raise up the just and clothe them with the glory of your kingdom. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Crucified Lord, you protect the soul of Burton by the power of your cross. And on the day of your coming, you will show mercy to all the faithful departed. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Judge of the living and the dead, at your voice the tombs will open, and all the just who sleep in, in your peace will rise and sing the glory of God. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. All praise to you, Jesus, our Savior. Death is in your hands, and all the living depend on you alone. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord God, whose days are without end, and whose mercy is beyond counting, keep us mindful that life is short, and the hour of death unknown. Let your Spirit guide our days on earth in the ways of holiness and justice, that we may serve you in union with the whole church. Sure, our journey is ended. Lead us rejoicing into your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the soul. Are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace. Amen. In the peace of Christ, thanks be to God. Oops.
my brother, last respect, I've got the funeral. Um, yeah, on the of your sister, my brother, that's good. So rest in peace, okay? Yes, my brother. I'm bringing it down so you can go. It's strong. Not go wrong to the metal. Yeah, they close it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's up? You good? Yeah, yeah. They close it already. I didn't see him in the church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
So first of all, I'd like to thank you for your patience and we do apologize for some of the interruptions. As you know, the Nanomo platform has absolutely no control over the internet connectivity. Also, when we're connected to a sound system, for example, inside the church, these are things we have no control over. So when you do get an interruption, it's beyond our control. But on behalf of the Tubal family, we'd like to thank each and everyone who reached out and supported them during the time of bereavement. Family greatly appreciates your support. Do have yourself a blessed and a wonderful evening. One love to the max.